Having made his debut as the main antagonist in Borderlands 2, Handsome Jack has become one of gaming's best villains. From his charismatic personality in tandem with his cold-hearted and psychopathic tendencies, to his overall general writing and story arc as a character, Jack, since his introduction, has been someone the franchise can't just leave behind and forget. So it seems about time I give you the history of Handsome Jack. Handsome Jack's real name is actually John, though his last name is still unknown. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to be referring to him as Jack. He was born on the planet of Tantalus. Hardly anything is really known about his childhood. His father died when he was very young, and his mother wound up putting him in the care of her mother, Jack's grandma. She was physically abusive towards him, which would cause Jack to form a deep-seated hatred towards her as time went on. Dad died pretty early. Mom pawned me off on her mom. Spent most of my time coding or getting smacked around. Had a cat. Grandma drowned it because it didn't make my bed. The usual stuff. It also seems that his interest in programming was just something that he always had, and his time spent with his grandmother further pushed him to spend time focusing on that instead of dealing with her. As Jack grew up and became an adult, he found himself a career within the Hyperion Corporation as a lowly programmer. This wasn't too bad for him, as despite not being in a high chain of command, his personal life was actually going pretty well. He, at some point, had met, married, and had a child with his wife, though her face and identity are currently unknown. Their daughter's name was Angel. Based on how things looked and sounded, despite his childhood, Jack was a pretty loving and caring parent slash husband. But things began to get complicated for him when Angel started to grow up. At some point during her childhood, Angel inherited the powers of one of the legendary sirens. Not understanding what was happening to her, he had set for a doctor to come and diagnose what the marks on her arms were. Hey, Angel. And who is this guy? Captain Bear. He eats crime. Whoa, we must be eating a lot with that big belly, huh? Hey, Angel, darling, what, what's that on your arm? Did you do that? Blue. I don't know where it came from. Do you think it's pretty? Yeah, sweetheart, it's... Real pretty. Hey, honey, can you get in here for a minute? But after having an argument with a broken vending machine, Angel uses her powers to fix it, which only further confuses him. Stupid goddamn! He's a crap asshole! What's an asshole? Oh, Angel, sweetheart, I'm sorry I didn't see you standing there. Uh, don't say any of those words that Daddy said, okay? Okay. Is the machine broken? Yeah, looks like no candy for us. Hey, why don't you go back into the waiting room with mommy, darling? Huh? The doctor's gonna be here any minute, okay? I think I can fix it. What the hell did you just do, Angel? Somehow, some way, likely due to Jack not knowing and not hiding Angel, her existence got spotted by a bandit who does know about sirens and their monetary value. This resulted in him taking Angel hostage in front of Jack and her mother. But after an uncontrolled outburst by Angel, she takes control of a turret killing the bandit, but also accidentally killing her mother in the process. Mommy! Daddy! Help! Look, you filthy bandit! Just... Give us back our daughter, okay? Are you kidding? She's a freaking siren! I'm gonna be a trillionaire! You and your wife get out of here before I stick my turrets on you! Forget the kid! Go make another one! No! I wanna go home! Shut up, kid, or I'll... Hey, what the... I wanna go home! I get down! No! No! Mommy? No! Angel! What did you do? What did you do? This event was really the first instance where Jack's worst tendencies began to rear their ugly head, and in reality, he was almost frozen in time. 
He formed an unwavering hatred for bandits and the like, believing them all to be immoral, money-seeking murderers. The worst of the worst, there are no redeeming qualities and they are only a menace to society. Because of that, he sought a form of revenge to get closure for himself and to avenge his wife. The only option in his mind was to kill them all. He began to plan for ways that he could accomplish this goal. One important piece would be Angel. Despite the accident, Jack unfortunately placed the blame on her shoulders as well. Though with her, it was more of a subconscious blame. He rarely expressed it out loud, but how he would begin to treat her would be the proof. He engineered and designed a mechanism that could restrain and control Angel's powers so another incident wouldn't happen again. This is what would become Control Core Angel. I don't understand, Daddy. Say hello to your new home, darling. You're like a little princess. And this is your throne. I want Mommy. Where's Mommy? She's not coming back, Angel. Now get in a freaking chair! I don't want to! So good. There we go, in the chair. Daddy, please, let me out! No can do, my sweet little angel. You're in that chair for your own good, okay? You're such an asshole! Language? Look, sweetheart, I can't let you out because of what you did to your mother, okay? I just couldn't bear it if something else happened to you. I didn't mean to. Shh, I know, darling. That's why you need to stay in that chair. But I got you something. That chair is connected to the entire Hyperion network. Now you can see through every satellite we own around every planet in the sky. You've got the best view in the whole universe from that chair. We're gonna work together. You and me, kiddo. Sound good? Yeah. Okay. I love you, Angel. I love you too, Dad. It was also around this time period within the years where Angel is still growing up, where it can be presumed that Jack got his second wife as well. He did wind up getting married again to another woman, identity also unknown. She seems to have gotten pretty close to him as she was entrusted with the knowledge of Angel's existence. She saw the whole thing as immoral and pushed Jack to shut down the Angel project. But he refused and she left him. She killed her mom. She couldn't control her powers. Kept her head for years. Second one, found out about her. Bolted. Her overall presence in the universe is largely non-existent other than the fact that she was Jack's second wife. A lot of time would pass as Angel grew up. In between these years, Jack began to study all he could about sirens, learning anything and everything he could about them. And while not everything was discovered, he did learn a surprising amount of details. But the most he learned about was Angel herself and her powers and capabilities. He fully understood her power to communicate and control technology and began using her as his ultimate trump card which all plans surrounded. He hooked her chamber up to the Hyperion network which gave her access to all of its satellites and information. He did this in secret and used her to bide his time within the company. It wasn't until Dahl withdrew from Pandora where he saw his opportunity to strike. John, why have you dispatched one of our satellites to Pandora? What are you doing? Uh, but, uh, sir, uh, the energy readings my, uh, instruments, uh, at home are getting from Pandora are... Get out of there at once, you hideous little code monkey, and shut off that satellite! Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Tassiter. It won't happen again, sir. Now, considering Jack was obviously introduced in the second game and fit into the first game after the fact, there are some slight inconsistencies. So the way the story goes was that he had Angel recruit four Vault Hunters and help him hunt the Vault to get his hands on the Destroyer which laid inside. It's unknown why he not only knows of the Vault that is on the planet despite it being an urban legend not even mega corporations could locate, but also the monster that lied inside as well. It is very possible that he was looking to get his hands on the weapons that were inside but then settled for the monster that they found instead. Anyway, regardless, Jack wanted his hands on what was inside of the vault. Though the actions of this would be disguised. Angel would present herself to Roland, Lilith, Mordecai, and Brick as an ally seeking to help the planet and the people on it. 
she was frequently stuck to a script that Jack himself was supervising and having her say. Okay, any candidates today, Angel? There are four treasure hunters who arrived on a shuttle several hours ago. They are currently on a bus to Firestone. Great. Say this to them. Don't be alarmed. I need you to stay calm and don't let on that anyone is talking to you. Start making your way off the bus. And of course, this is where the events of Borderlands 1 take place. As for Jack's importance in this, he successfully has Angel guide the characters to the vault and kill the destroyer for him. Once this is done, she sends them away and Jack swoops in to reap his rewards. Things didn't go exactly as planned as he wanted the monster not dead, but he did manage to save one of its eyes. Fortunately, as a coincidence, Hyperion was building the moon base of Helios and Jack was put in charge of supervising it while under construction. This was perfect for him as he took the Eye of the Destroyer and created his own weapon using it, dubbed the Eye of Helios. Basically, a giant space laser. He intended to use this super powerful laser to wipe out all of the bandits easily from the comfort of space. Pandora was his first target, and once all of the bandits were dead, it could become a much more civilized planet. But before we get ahead of ourselves, in between the events of Borderlands 1 and the pre-sequel which is coming up, Jack did dip his toes back into the dating scene once more with Mad Moxie. He charmed her quite well by the sounds of it, but as their relationship advanced, he became much more clingy, exhibiting many of the worst qualities he'd go on to have later down the road. But these two's relationship lasted a decent amount of time long enough for the two to share their future ambitions with each other like Moxie's dream of opening a space casino. But eventually, Moxie recognized the red flags and dumped him. Like many who have past experiences with her, Jack would still remain infatuated with Moxie for the foreseeable future. Anyway, going back to his main purpose, installing the Eye of Helios and forming his plans to use it would take some time. But while things began to start looking good for him, the universe had other plans. A group known as the Lost Legion were given visions of the future by the vault which resided on Elpis, and they saw what the future held. More specifically, the role Jack would have in it and its destruction. Because of this, they worked to take control of the Helios base so Jack couldn't use its weapon. Being just a programmer at the time, he wasn't capable of fighting them off himself, so he needed help. He put out a job offering anyone who wanted and was capable of hunting vaults to help him, and also get rid of the Lost Legion. He called one of Hyperion's best mercenaries, Wilhelm, and paid him a lot of money. He had an old but classic Claptrap unit reprogrammed to make him a capable warrior, also, at some point in time, Jack had created his own doppelganger program. This was still before he had any real power or pull within the company, but yet he seems to have been able to fund something like this with no problems. It's largely unexplained why this was made at this point in time. Despite this, Timothy Lawrence was also personally recruited. Alongside them, Athena, Nisha, and Aurelia Hammerlock all answered the call or tagged along later and this would be the group that he led during the events of the pre-sequel. During this game, he also enlists the assistance of Moxie, Roland, and Lilith, who were in the area as well. During their attempts to take down the Lost Legion, this is where many of Jack's worst tendencies really come to light. He kills the Marif, who admittedly fires at him first. He launches a group of scientists out in airlock out of fear that one of them may be trying to stab him in the back and he quote-unquote kills Felicity, an AI who's helped him create the Constructor and begs that he duplicate her memory so that she can live while also being installed. But he ignores her pleas and just installs her, which practically kills her. In all of these cases, Jack feels justified in his murder, but not to the people around him. Roland, Lilith, and Moxie all notice this and deem him a liability to continue assisting. The three continue to pose as his ally to get closer to the Eye of Helios, but when there, they double-cross him and destroy the weapon. This event really gets under Jack's skin, but he becomes more determined and tracks down the Vault on Elpis for its new power, taking down the Lost Legion in their way. Jack's Vault Hunters take down the Sentinel, and Jack goes on to claim his new weapon, but is disappointed. When he grabs it, he too begins seeing visions of the future. But before he can get too much more knowledge, Lilith teleports in and punches the relic into Jack's face, branding him with its symbol. And this is where the true face of Handsome Jack was born. 
Jack gets a mask grafted onto his face to hide his scar and returns to Hyperion and murders its president, Harold Tassiter. Ah, da, 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 now, now, Mr. Tassiter, blackmail. Such a dirty little word, isn't it? Actually, now I come to think of it, it's not a dirty word at all. It's kind of awesome. Blackmail. Say it with me. Back. Oh, go to hell, John. Just because you got lucky with your Pandora hunch doesn't mean... Because I was right, is what you mean. And call me Jack, idiot. You may have been able to scare the other directors into giving up their shares, but I know you. I know that beneath that ridiculous mask, you're still a hideous, pathetic little nobody. Mr. Tassiter, maybe you can settle up something for me. Do you know the difference between choking and strangulation? Mr. Tassiter? Mr. Tassiter, are you there? Mr. Tassiter's been replaced, Sweet Cheeks. Starting today, you're working for me. Who is... John, is that you? Call me Jack, honey. <sighs> Handsome Jack. With Jack now claiming Hyperion's role as president, he's free to exact revenge on those who crossed him with the power and influence of a mega corporation. One of his first actions as president was tracking down something known as the H-Source. It was a collection of Hyperion technological secrets buried in the Claptrap's mind he had been working with. To make a long story short, which doesn't really involve Jack, the journey is successful and the H-Source is extracted. Being fed up with the Claptrap line, Jack then remotely shuts down and destroys every Claptrap unit running, though he personally shot the Frag Trap. After the events of the pre-sequel, not everyone he worked with stuck around. Notably, Aurelia and Athena stopped associating with him. But the likes of Wilhelm, Timothy, and Nisha still stood by his side. Claptrap, obviously dead, but not really because he survived. Jack and Nisha, in fact, started dating as he found her complete sadistic nature very arousing. He at one point took over the town of Lynchwood and gifted it to her as a present. There were a few other notable events in and of themselves, one of which was the bankruptcy of Atlas. Jack had come to form a grudge against the mega corporation and ran them out of business and purchased the company for himself, just so he could laugh at their demise. And while this event isn't quite as major, Jack also did steal Moxie's idea for a space casino and made it for himself as the Handsome Jackpot. It was a Handsome Jack-themed casino that was heavily rigged against its patrons to make them indebted to the casino itself. He had also forced all of his doppelgangers to get the exact same face brand that he had to keep with their authenticity. Also, while it doesn't happen until a bit into his reign as Handsome Jack, he sends some bandits to murder his grandmother as well. There was just not another time to cleanly mention this, so I thought I'd put it in here. And who can forget, his bravado was also so strong that he purchased a diamond pony named Butt Stallion. After becoming Handsome Jack, his psycho and sociopathic tendencies really began to rear their ugly head. The majority of his focus became the revenge and eradication of Pandora and its bandit population. The bandits were classified largely based on those who opposed him. To do this, he enacted complete corporate and military control over the planet. To eradicate everyone, he was going to use the Warrior as he saw visions of while on Elpis. He also set up mining operations to dig up as much iridium as possible as the new element had broken its way through to the surface after the events of the first game. He used and tested this element in all kinds of new ways. Human experimentation, which would result in the creation of those like Krieg, a new element called Slag, as well as a new line of E-Tech weaponry. Iridium also had quite the amplification on sirens as well. Jack had come to learn of this and devised a method to speed up the vault key's charging time via a siren battery of sorts. Firstly, he needed the vault key, so he tracked down Patricia Tannis, who was in possession of it after the destroyer was killed, and tortured her, breaking her hands until she gave it up. Jack then began pumping Angel full of the mined Iridium to charge the key. Why isn't this working, Angel? I don't... I've pumped every freaking ounce of iridium I've got into you, but this stupid key isn't working. Why? I I'm sorry, I don't know. You're a siren. You're one of a kind. Now make it work. I want that freaking warrior, Angel. I want him awake, okay? I want him under my control. Now, I, I want him now. Not later, now! 
One of the biggest forces standing against him were the Crimson Raiders, who were now being led by Roland and Lilith. Fortunately for Jack in his battle against the Raiders, his intimidation tactics worked as he got an informant within the town of New Haven to sell everyone out. Jack then sent Wilhelm to ambush everyone, which almost worked. Roland, Lilith, Mordecai, and Brick were barely capable of holding Wilhelm off while everyone else evacuated, though Brick was captured. As for the refugees, they were all then forced to make their way to Sanctuary. Not all of them would make it, however. Helena Pierce, who appeared in the first game as the administrator of the town, as well as many civilians, were ambushed by Jack and Wilhelm, where they were all subsequently murdered. To keep other Vault Hunters from coming to the planet, he also ironically had to lure them to the planet. He sent out messages appealing to their dreams of riches and power and lured them onto a rigged train full of explosives. He would then subsequently ambush them, kill them, and dump their remains in a cold wasteland. And this brings us to Borderlands 2. Angel yet again scouts four Vault Hunters to be lured and Jack tries his old tricks. However, things do not go quite as expected. Maya, Axton, Salvador, and Zero, along with the unexpected help of Gage and Krieg, fend off his assault and survive his trap. They wake up in Windshear Waste where they are saved by Claptrap and later go on to join the Crimson Raiders. This history video isn't about the Vault Hunters, obviously, but due to the joining of the Crimson Raiders, they would frequently stand in the way of Jack's plans. One of the earliest successes he has is an attack on Sanctuary. He poisons his longtime comrade Wilhelm and sends him off with a power core, putting out a rumor that he might have the Vault Key on him. The Vault Hunters, as predicted, attack him, kill him, and steal his power core. They use this as the new shield to defend Sanctuary, but considering it was Jax, only gives him control to disarm the shield and launch his own orbital attack. The city is only saved thanks to Lilith teleporting it away. Throughout the game, Jack largely jokes around and taunts the player, but things get serious when they find Angel. Angel has since grown tired of her father's treatment of her and had joined the Vault Hunters in trying to take him down. Part of taking him down is killing her due to just how large of a role she plays for him. Per her wishes, the Vault Hunters kill her, which sends Jack on a true warpath of revenge. His first main action is killing Roland in a surprise attack and kidnapping Lilith as he is in need of a new siren. His journey for revenge gets quite twisted. He no longer wanted anyone to kill the Vault Hunters as he wanted to do it himself. He takes Lilith to the Warrior's Vault which he's since uncovered and began using her as the catalyst for charging the Vault Key. Due to the iridium pumping through her veins, Jack was able to stab and slice Lilith over and over again without her dying. The next time we see him is during the final confrontation between him and the Vault Hunters. After getting into a fight personally but losing, he summons the warrior to take care of everyone. However, the warrior is also defeated. Jack is left there alone and bloodied with his entire dreams being crushed. He chastises the Vault Hunters and Lilith for stopping him and allowing the lawless Pandora to continue on. No, 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 I can't highlight this. Not when I'm so close. And not at the hands. Of a filthy bandit! See, I could have saved this planet. See, I, I could have actually restored order. And I wasn't supposed to die by the hands of a child killing psychopath! You're a savage! You're a maniac! You are a bandit! And I am the goddamn hero! The warrior was practically a god. How? How in the hell have you killed my warrior? You idiots. The warrior could have brought peace to this planet. No more dangerous creatures, no more bandits. Pandora, it could have been paradise! In the end, he still views himself as a hero attempting to stop the needless murder brought upon by bandits and criminals. He is then either killed by the Vault Hunter or Lilith, depending on the player. Now the thing is, Jack's story does end here, but there's a bit of an asterisk next to that because he did get his brain cloned by Professor Nakayama in the form of an AI. 
So another version of Jack does exist and serves a pretty big role in Tales from the Borderlands, but I'm not going to include that version of him in this video. It is technically Jack, but I still think of him as a bit of a different character. If his story picked up where it left off after Borderlands 2, then I probably would consider it a continuation. But it was more of a saved file from when it got cloned. It has all the memories, tendencies, and personality of Jack, but it's still a clone. But for now, that does it for the history of Handsome Jack. He didn't start out as a villain, but even when he descended, he always viewed himself as the hero. Everything he said, he believed, even when he was lying to himself. He's one of the greatest video game villains of all time, and he will never be forgotten. But in the meantime, if there are any other Borderlands characters you'd like to see me do a history of video, then be sure to let me know in the comments below, and until next time, I'll see you in the next video.